Hey, good afternoon, or good morning, or good evening, or whatever the hell time it is, fellow fishermen. I'm here, this is Fishmonger. I'm going to go through and um, make a quick video uh, showing the proper setup of the uh, Fishmonger um, program for, for Warcraft, so you can basically get the setup and get yourself uh, fishing. Uh, and just a quick note, everything I'm going to go through here is actually in this help file, which I do strongly recommend you read because, A, it took me a long time to write it, and then B, pretty much any problems you might have are answered in the help file because pretty much any problem you've had, I've had. So I've had to go through and tweak it and kind of fix the issue and 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 um, and prevent it from happening again. So so there's a you know a little common problem thing at the bottom, frequently asked questions and stuff. So I do strongly recommend you you go through and just read this whole thing. It's real quick. It'll kind of help uh, explain how to get the most out of the uh, program. So on page one here. Basically, it says uh, program requires the following, and requires means that you have to do it. Um, although some of these things aren't required, and I'll get into that. Uh, fishing cast key must be bound to the number one location. Pretty much means so when you push the number one button, it casts the fishing rod. So right now you can see my number one key bind is actually charge, which is not fishing. So I'm going to go to my alternate um, uh, tool uh, action bar here. Right, so I can just I can, I'm hitting shift and mouse button, but you can also just use this thing to go to it. And I'm gonna open up a K to open up professions. Um, and whatever your professions tab is, just go to that. There's my fishing. So I'm gonna grab that and just bring that right down to number one and let go. So now when I push number one, I fish. It's very important. First thing you gotta do. Second thing says that the program must, and it's not really a must, but it's really, 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 really strongly recommend. Not this kind of strongly recommend, but like way more of a strongly recommend where it's kind of a requirement, but set to windowed or windowed full screen mode. But what that means is if you go to system and then graphics, you have a display mode here and I'm set to windowed. Windowed full screen also works, but windowed is, is ideal. Um, Fishmonger doesn't like full screen because of the way it takes over the full screen and, and works with your uh, video card. So you got to go windowed or windowed full screen here for um, for this to work uh, for you. And the uh, second thing here is a character must be in um, position and zoomed all the way in, um, which is uh, brings you to the first person perspective. So like right now I'm third person, and if I hit the home key. It actually zooms me all the way in and actually takes me all the way out. Your key binds might be different, but that's how it works, I think, is the default settings. You can also use the scroll button or scroll wheel on your mouse. generally works for you. So if I bring it all the way in, this is first person. This is where you want to be for your settings. Um, and then something we're going to touch on a little bit later. It says video settings must be set correctly. you got to see the video settings below. Quick note. And to the strongly recommended section, um, use a monitor with the screen resolution set to 1920 by 1080. That's just standard 1080 resolution. And it's because I did the majority of my testing and tweaking at this setting because that's what my computer uses, 1920 by 1080. Of course, I want to get this program set up to work really good on my computer because I fish all the time with it. Um, I got the best result of this setting because that's where I did all my testing. Coincidence? I think not. Um, however... It does work at other resolutions, not as well. So if you can go to 1920 by 1080, I do recommend you do it. Um, the other standard resolutions, like the 720p, which is like what 1366 by 720 or 1360 by 720, depending on what kind of you know, laptop or monitor you run, um, generally works pretty good also because I also have a laptop that runs that resolution. I did testing at that, you know. But some of you have them wonky 14-inch square monitors or something like that. You know, if you can just set the 1920 1080, I guarantee you have much much better. Um, success. So, um, looking at the video settings here, if I scroll down to here, I'm actually in the wrong order, but it says that we need to adjust three settings to have Fishmonger perform its best. Um, I'm going to do this one first because it really should be rearranged, but it says under interface and display, we need to adjust the to have outline mode basically enabled. Um, and it's got to be on either quest objectives, quest objectives, and mouse over, or quest objectives, and mouse over target. Doesn't really matter which one. Um, and thanks to Dan who pointed that out to me because I totally missed that. It was just a default on mine. I didn't realize it. But outline mode here, if you have it set to disabled, just to show you. So if I go to what the hell was it? Interface display. If I go to interface and then display, and I have uh, this disabled, right? When I fish. It gives me all these little sparkly things, and they suck. You don't want them because that totally interferes with Fishmonger. So you have to come in here 
and basically say you got to put it on something. It's got to be enabled somehow. It's any one of these three. Quest objectives does it because it gets rid of the sparkles and the same with the other ones. So you have to put it on one of these three. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, the uh, And then coming up to here, which again, they should be rearranged. The other two settings you have to change are liquid detail. Should be set to good, which is right here, liquid detail. Can I zoom in on this? All right. Liquid detail should be set to good. And outline mode should be set to allowed. All right. And right now I have them set on that. So you can see system graphics. So I'll go to system graphics. Here's liquid detail, good. Outline mode allowed. If I put outline mode off, again, what happens is there's my sparkles. We don't want sparkles. <laughs> so I'm going to put them back on to allow to get rid of the sparkles. There you go. And if you go to the other one here, which was, um, oops. If you go to the other one, which was uh, liquid detail, all right, just you can see the water here, right? L look how nice and murky that water is. I have a super bright bobber on top of a super dark background. Very high contrasting colors. That's what you're looking for. So if I come in here and I say system and I go to liquid detail, I'll just change it to fair, right? Oh my gosh. That's cool. Look, you can see all the stuff in the water. And there's my bright bobber. There's all the stuff in the water. But I don't care about any of this stuff. I just want to see the bobber and nothing else. So all these other colors and all this funky stuff in here could affect Fishmonger and how well it uh, searches for your bobber. So the best thing to do... I'm just going to get that. The best thing to do is put this on good. All right. You can do ultra, I think, also. Let me take a look. Ultra works good, too, but it's generally a little bit harder on your graphics processor. So I do recommend um, good. I think low works. Hang on. Now, low's kind of the same thing. It throws the stuff under it. So you really want to do good or or um, or ultra if you can. I just do good just because, I don't know, it looks just as good as ultra as far as I'm concerned. If I'm playing Warcraft, I don't really care too much about the water. So so that's the, uh, the setting with uh, the video there. Uh, the video settings. So now that you have that all set up, I mean, that that's pretty much it. You've got your fishing set in key by number one. You've got your video settings all adjusted, the three video settings that you need. Um, you're pretty much ready to go. I mean, you got, you know, your windowed set up, the windowed mode and all that stuff. You're in the proper position. Really, at this point, it's just a matter of finding the proper direction and place to stand so you can get the proper bobber color. And what I mean by that is, little note, you know, the success of this program is highly dependent on the lighting of the bobber. Bobber with the most contrast on the right-hand side, it provides the best results because that side of the bobber is subject to the most amount of movement or more movement. Basically, when the bobber ca catches, the right-hand side of the bobber moves up and down a lot. The left side doesn't move that much. So right here, this top section of the bobber, and I hope you can see my cursor, but this top section, can I highlight that? Yeah, that top section right there, that is what we want to be bright white. You don't really care too much about this section. You don't care too much about the feathers. You really care about this area here. We want to get that to be as bright white as we can. All right, and you can see here in the picture on the right, top of the bobber is very bright white. This is what we want, all right? Can't stress that enough. Um, and then as far as positioning goes, um, you know, you really want to make sure when you cast that your your four little yellow um, uh, squares here, basically, you, every time you cast, your bobber is within those four squares. So, for instance, I don't want to be looking up here while I'm fishing. And I'll, let me bring up the overlay real quick. Because then my search box is searching in the sky. I would think that's common sense, but some people seem to miss that. So where if you spam number one over and over and over again, wherever the average of all these bobbers are, that's you want to make sure your search box is basically surrounding those bobbers. And if you're if you're able to do that, you're okay. Now just to show you, alright, where I'm at right now, oh okay. Scared the hell out of me there. That was that bagel. Um if you if you, um, like where I'm standing over here, by the, by the wreck of the mother load, if I come over and let's say I stand over here and I cast, I zoom in and cast, all right, it's not a bad bright white bobber, but from my experience, it looks like it's starting to get gray on the left-hand side. I mean, it could be brighter. If I just turn a little bit this way, like, okay, so you can see 
just by looking at this direction and I cast, I get really bright feathers and a dark top of the bobber. That's not good. All I gotta do is just spin, yeah, 20, 30 degrees to the left, and all of a sudden, my bobber color changes immensely. Dark feathers, really bright white top of the bobber. I mean, that's what you're looking for there. That's the perfect color combination. I wouldn't want to fish here, though, only because all this stuff in the background might get in the way. Because uh, you got to figure, this search box, it's going to search anywhere in this box. It's going to search the stuff in the background, too. I mean, maybe if I were to position it like this, it might work out. Uh, for the hell of it, let's roll with it and see what the hell happens. But if I were to position it like this, it might work out pretty good. Um, but, you know, ideally you want to be in a spot where there's really nothing else in the background. you got a lot of open area. E even the water, the reflections on the water, you'd like them to be as smooth and as uh, constant as you can to really get the best results. I mean, I actually think I'd be okay where I'm at here. Um, I'm a little bit nervous because there is some wasps flying around to the right of me, but... Uh, this looks like it would be an adequate position because I do have good color on the top of the bobber. I have a nice contrast, bright and uh, bright bobber to dark background. And it doesn't look like whatever's in the background here is really affecting me that much. So as far as the setup goes for a fishmonger, that's really what you're looking for. Um, for the initial setup, um, I, I tell a lot of people all the time, I'm going to stop this real quick. I tell a lot of people all the time that you know, your search sensitivity and color sensitivity, they are, after a while, you'll just kind of find good spots for them to be at. Um, oh, ooh, my eBay auctions are winning. So, like, for instance, if I were to take this search sensitivity to 9, eh, the hell, I'll go to 10. If I go to 10 and I start fishing, all right, and I have to actually take off bobber tracking. So, hang on, let me do that real quick. Okay. So, up here... You can see that it says range 10 to negative 10. And I got a whole bunch of numbers here directly next to it. 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 1. That is the, the movement it is detecting in the bobber. So right now, like it's actively detecting a movement of negative 1, 0, 1, 0. Basically what it's saying is there's not a lot of movement. All right. So whatever number, like that's going to spike to a number when the bobber strikes. And you want to set this, you want to set your uh, search sensitivity to a threshold above normal bobber movement. And normal bobber movement, in this case, is around negative 1 to 0 to 1. Like right now, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 5, 8. See, I just spiked to 5 and 8. So, so actually, I have to stop this. But, which is why... Um, you, you want to set this to a number a little bit higher than the standard um, numbers that it's seeing here. So I, I usually find 3, 4, 5 work out pretty good. I like to go to 3. So what's going to happen is when I start fishing, over here, you're going to see a common set of numbers. You know, 0, negative 1, 1, 0. And then it's when it, the bobber catches a fish, it's going to spike up and down. These numbers are going to spike. That number is going to be higher or lower than my range. And when that happens... There you go. See negative five, it's below negative three. So that signals it to catch. All right. So really when you're setting up your search sensitivity, you just want to set up I'm gonna stop this real quick. You want to set this up to be a number that is above the normal uh floating numbers here for when it's not being caught. And as far as the color sensitivity goes, some people have been asking me about this. Really what this is is like I I actually have six colors you can choose from. And I just did this for my initial testing, but really I just keep it on color number one because that is like the, the best color seems to work out with. Color number one is actually white. You can see it gives you a sample of the color here. So color number one, this white box, is searching for white. So if I have a color sensitivity of, oh, it looks like 25 is the lowest I can go. What this is going to do is it's going to search in this box for this bobber with the color of white. And I'll start this. And it's going to search for... Exactly white or 25 shades off of white. All right. And because I have a really, really, really bright bobber top, it might actually find it here. It looks like it is. Um, I really should put on bobber tracking. Let me do that. Let's start over. All right. Because bobber tracking, what that does is it's great for troubleshooting because it'll tell you where you're able to or where it's finding the color that you're looking for so in this case i am looking for white i have a sensitivity 25 the mouse cursor is always about an inch below um the color it finds so it is finding white 
and it's finding it in that spot, which is actually the top of the bobber. So I, I, I'm surprised. I've never actually run the sensitivity as low as 25. However, I do have a very bright bobber top here. So um, that's, that's actually going to work to my advantage. Um, if I stop this, just to show you, if I go the other end of the spectrum, and I bring that all the way up to 200, what that's going to do is it's going to search for white, and it's going to search for white that is 200 shades away from white. And in this particular case, it's finding, uh, I think it's actually finding the yellow of the, um, uh, the, no, I can't find that, that's the overlay. It's finding, it's actually finding the ocean. It's finding the top left portion of the ocean, which it thinks is close enough to white, even though it is a ridiculous uh, light gray. So, and it's going to keep finding that over and over and over again, because basically it's searching and saying, oh, I found your color here, and really that's not right. If I were to bring this down to like somewhere in the 150s, I bet you what's going to happen is it might find the bobber, but it's also going to find the other colors of white that are on the bobber, and it's probably going to jump around a lot to the left and the right. Let's see. Oh, nope. Okay, so it actually was finding the bobber there. Oh, see, it's, it's having trouble. It's finding, yeah, see, it's finding the white that's above the feather, and it's also finding the white on the bobber, but then because it's it's constantly skipping around all over the place because it sees all these different whites, it's basically timing out and causing issues, and, and as you can see, it actually caused a pretty big issue there. So I'm going to stop this again, put my, my angle back up, and I'm going to bring him down to... I mean, 25 was working fine, but just to show you, 70 should work... Uh, just as well because it's um, from my experience it's uh, you, you only start seeing the top of the feathers when you start hitting around the hundreds 105s 110s depending on how bright it is so anywhere below that it's really it's not it's not going to see the feathers it's going to see the bobber top color in this case since I know I can go all the way down to 25 I can actually probably go all the way up to 100 here's 70 um, it's going to see the exact portion of the bobber that I want to every single time so I'm going to uh, wrap this video up now because I'm probably just rambling. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, hit me up, uh, wowfishmonger at yahoo.com. I'll see what I can do to help you out. Um, if you're having problems with something, feel free to hit print screen, send me over a screenshot of what's going on on your computer so I can help diagnose your issues. Um, I've, I've been able to help out tons of people, and a lot of times it's just real simple stuff like the, uh, the color sensitivity or the angles of things or just little things like that. And, you know, a lot of people said, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve with this, but once you kind of get the hang of it and you understand what the program's doing with all the settings that you have, then you kind of, you can, you can really adjust it and tweak it to, to suit any different location that you're at or any different angle that you're at, um, and, and make it work flawlessly. So, uh, I'm out and, uh, have a good one.